And if you compare for a moment the broadcast network and how much is controlled within the broadcast network versus the internet and how little is controlled outside of the hands of the end users, what you see is a radical change in the power to control which portion of the communication can be controlled by whom. And end users get to control the vast majority of discrete components of any communicative action once they use the internet. Now, what this change in architecture, which is itself a, re a, a result of a change in technology of communications and computations represent, is an unusually crisp moment of opportunity for deciding how it is that we will organize our system of information production and exchange. What we've seen for the past 150 years, since roughly the second quarter of the 19th century, is a systematic trend towards concentration and commercialization of information production. The result of this was an adaptation of public discourse from a relatively smaller scale, discursive and engaged environment to a stark separation between professional production that required heavy investment in mechanical presses, in telegraph capacity, to a very widely dispersed population of people who were reading one paper or perhaps two. This model, needless to say, was very easily adapted to radio and later on to television and cable systems and, and, and satellite. They all shared the same economic structure, high upfront costs of capital and distribution to mass audiences. The internet represents an opportunity for a radical reversal of this trend. It extends the reach of the network, but not as did each of its preceding technologies by increasing the capital cost of communication, but in fact by radically distributing the capital cost of communication. A laptop or a desktop is not fundamentally different from a router inside the internet network in the same way that a telephone or a television is different from a switch or a broadcast station. The network gets flattened out as a matter of its economic capitalization structure. And this means that anyone with the capacity to buy a relatively small device, be it an individual in the more advanced economies or a village in more developing economies, suddenly has the capacity to be a publisher, to have global reach in a way that was impossible simply because of the capital structure of communication systems before the internet. We are now therefore entering a moment in which human beings rather than capital can become the organizing factor of our communication system and of the information environment that it makes possible. Because it is no longer necessary to aggregate large amounts of capital in order effectively to communicate, what remains is the one thing that cannot be reduced, and that is human creativity and experience and wisdom. And that can become the organizing principle of our new information economy. What we're seeing on the internet with the radical decentralization of capital in the network are two emerging phenomena that diverge from markets and hierarchies. The first is an increasing role for all forms of non-market production. Now, we have to remember that in information production, it was always the case that non-market producers played a more important role than in the production of cars. We don't have academic centers for the production of cars and steel. And yet for information, for science, for knowledge, Academic centers are crucial. Non-market sectors are crucial. We see it from academic science. We see it in things like public television and public radio, like the BBC. We see it in, in um, publications like Consumer Reports. Non-market players, non-commercial players play a huge role in information production already. With the reduction in the cost of being an effective global reach communicator of any form, these non-market providers who have fixed budget usually rather than like commercial providers having budgets that are linked to how many people use them are now able to reach much wider audiences much more effectively than they could before because while the budgets are fixed, what you can do with a fixed budget increases dramatically. 
The other and perhaps more radical development that we're seeing, and in fact sufficiently important that we will spend an entire session on it in the live session, is the emergence of large-scale commons-based peer production. Again, like science or like the Oxford English Dictionary, this is not unique to the net. We have seen large-scale cooperative enterprises for the creation of information, knowledge, and culture before the net emerged, even without mark around the markets, not in markets, and not in industrial firms. And yet, as we see with the emergence of free software, as we see with the increasing salience of phenomena like Slashdot and Wikipedia and the Open Directory Project, more and more on the web we are seeing effective, large-scale collaboration between volunteers who make information goods that are as good as, if not better, than those produced by the market in a way that was impossible, or all but impossible, before the internet emerged. <laughs>